Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds coffee is my guilty pleasure. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. Everybody, it's Tuesday night, time for another live Wicked Horror Show. I'm Kevin, and this week I'm joined by guest co-host Steve McMonster. What do I do with my hands? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, okay. What's going on, guys? Uh, you guys much. don't know me, but I, I'm I'm here to stay. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, oh, all right. <laughs> um, and we have a very special guest this week, uh, director of the third guest. We have Sean Patrick Cannon. What's going on, Sean? Hey, glad to be here, guys. Yeah, glad to have you on. Um, so the, the third guest uh, is your newest movie. Looking at your IMDb, you've been all over the place. Like you've worked in a lot from like editorial department to editor, producer, director. Um, so like you're, you have your, your toes dabbled in the independent film world and you also have your toes in the, uh, you know, television world and like higher budget Hollywood movies and stuff like that. Um, so uh, how, how did this all start for you? Like, how did you uh, get into filmmaking? Um, so I grew up in New Jersey and um, in the 80s, 90s, going to movies with my dad and most of the time with the family, but a lot of times me and my dad and my brother. And that to me has a lot of nostalgia with all the movies from the 80s and 90s, the popcorn movies. So that's what I grew up on. And I love your background with the VHS tape. Like, so VHS, that's when it was, it's payday, so I watched a lot of stuff on there. My first editing was just two VCRs connected with each other and then mixing the stuff back and forth. Um, I thought I was going to be an actor and I student theater, stuff like that. I did a bunch of like okay theater productions with like New Jersey State Theater, stuff like that. Um, but most of my auditions were failed. And when I got into college, I realized, all right, well, I'm still doing Shakespeare. I'm going to graduate in four years. Like, how do you make money off doing Shakespeare? You know in circa 2000 so just so happened that my undergraduate franklin and marshall had digital cameras but they don't didn't have a film undergraduate program it was just a, i was a theater major so i commandeered that those cameras and just went into making feature films which were terrible but all the actors were like me they okay, we don't want to do shakespeare not to talk down on the theater department. right but yeah how do you make a living doing shakespeare like you said yeah, and that is like i thought okay you're in college now what are you gonna do oh okay i did macbeth for the second time i did hamlet i did 12th night okay well that's great um so anyway a lot of the actors were totally gung-ho um and they were really good actors and my, my script sucked um but yeah fast forward a year later i ended up doing a lot of study abroad i did study abroad in england i got a MFA from the American Film Institute. So um, I went to Princeton, I went to Vassar, I went to um, University of East Anglia out there. So eventually AFI, thankfully, again, I failed a lot of my MFA, like I failed at UCLA, I failed at USC, that was where I really wanted to go. But for some reason, AFI took a liking to me and accepted me, so I just darted right there. And yeah, that's how I started. I got, went behind the camera after, but well, admittedly, I was a terrible actor. Like, I think my personality is kind of quirky, like, you know, comedian type. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to play more serious roles because I wanted to act outside of myself. And the roles I was getting was, you know, oh, I'm the comic relief. Oh, I'm the guy that falls on his face. Yeah. Like, well, I was also the guy that got shoved into lockers in school. Well, yeah. Like, really that. So um, I was able to write and cater my own stories behind the camera. That helped out a lot. Nice. But, um, yeah, so... Uh, go, going into, you said you studied abroad uh, over in the UK. I think that may be the only place you could go to maybe make a living doing Shakespeare because I know like there's a lot of big names that will go there just to do a run of like plays for Shakespeare, like Shakespeare stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm glad that you're doing films and stuff and editing and, and what have you. Um, so 
with uh, the third guest, do you want to give a little synopsis about uh, about what the movie's about? Yeah. So um, the third guest is a story about a mother who um, she lost her daughter. She, the mother is obsessed about fame, and she wants to. She's a she's a writer. She wants to be like a big time. I'm going to write the next American novel. And she has a daughter, but she's kind of neglecting her parenting to like go all in on her career. She has an agent who doesn't really respect her very much. So she's going into, she's going real far into a career where all the people around her are like, not saying her for, to fail, but like they're, they're not really believing in her. Her daughter passes away from an illness. The agent tries to exploit that by being like, oh, you should get into these paranormal things. So she starts writing these trashy novels. Um, it's kind of like a traveling, like her and her, uh, Former husband, now her um, She's been through various men. The man, the man that she's with at the beginning of the film is an old lover. And they have partnered together to do these trashy, like, I'm going to visit the town. And, like, Netflix just had a uh, uh, one of these paranormal ghost shows where you have, like, paranormal investigators that go into these haunted spaces. They live there. They write about it. They vlog about it, stuff like that. And they know it's shit. I don't know if I can curse. Oh, you can say whatever you want. Right, awesome. So yeah. they, 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 um, they don't, they don't like what they're doing because it's like bottom barrel stuff, and she wants to do more like established stuff. Yeah. Um, so, and it also doesn't pay very well. These people don't have a lot of money. So their agent, the same agent, is like, I have an actual big gig, but you have to travel for it. It's up in the woods. Blah blah blah. Same shit. So they immediately go up there, and the story picks up where when she starts to hear her dead daughter, this mother character, starts to hear her dead daughter. She immediately thinks that it's, uh, she immediately thinks that it's uh, something like Frank's. So what I'm trying to do with these with my scripts is be as beautiful as possible. So like anyone's immediate reaction is going to be, oh, like ghosts aren't real. Someone's messing with. Um, but as the story goes on and on, you realize that the previous owner of this house is actually some kind of supernatural entity and is messing with her. His aim to mess with her is to get that artistic stuff out of her and use it for his own nefarious purpose. He kind of like is a paranormal presence throughout this ghost world. So along with an explanation, I would say a very short log line would be mother and husband ghost hunting team goes into the woods and they... they discover their dead daughter and that's what parents nice. nice first off Steve, your mic just got wicked loud out of nowhere um, what the hell yeah um but anyways i so i i enjoyed it it was uh I, i'm a i'm a fan of the paranormal stuff in general like uh i was part of a paranormal group uh years ago and uh th there's been a we, we've actually a while back on the show we've had steve from ghost hunters on the show and all this other stuff i'm just a fan of that stuff anyways whether or not i believe it or not i don't know but it's uh but i i enjoyed it and and also real quick sergio's in the chat over on the youtube side saying hey what's up serge good to have you back um so the one thing with this with this movie is that it's um I, i'm a big fan of slow burn like i'm a big fan of some character development and then like uh you know some good payoff and this, I would say this movie definitely kind of switched for me, um, probably like three quarters in, maybe even a little bit earlier than that. Like there was a few things that I was like, did I just hear what I thought I heard? And I had to go back and be like, no, 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 that's what they said. And then with the uh, the boyfriend uh, or, you know, he he's, things start getting pretty crazy uh, on his end as well. And uh, I enjoyed that quite a bit. It was, it was actually something I wasn't expecting. I was expecting it from her more so than from him. Um, yeah. <laughs> To, uh, come up with something that kind of you. Yeah, I, I think those slow burns are great. Like, there's a director named Ty West. Oh, I love, I absolutely yeah. love Ty West. Yeah, I like all his stuff, and like, I, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I, I try and fail in cases. I think with our limited budget here, to go off what you just said, as the editor, I think the middle of our movie is the best, which is odd because most times in screenwriting and in films, the middle is the worst part of the movie. They have a really good beginning and end. The middle is the hardest <laughs> to write for. But as seeing this to in totality, the middle where the the, uh, the Karloff uh, magician guy is really messing with her head in the middle, and it's just kind of her alone in the woods being manipulated, um, that 
I, I really think there's a good 20, 30 minute chunk in the middle of that movie that could easily be in a $2 million movie, but it's condensed into what is $30,000 or so. Yeah. Also 30,000. That's, I mean, that's, that's still, I mean, for like, I know Steve uh, and I have been throwing around the idea of like doing some shorts and stuff like that. And I know $30,000 would be about $30,000 more than our budget. Would be. Um, <laughs> You're not. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, but that, that's, that's still, that's, that's pretty, uh, I mean, I think the movie looks great and, um, you know, it, for, for that budget, I mean, it, it always surprises me. I mean, you said that you, when you started editing, it was like VCR to VCR. I was on the yeah. same boat, like me and my friends making short, like dumb things, same deal, VCR to VCR, very noisy, very grainy. Uh, you know, we thought it was awesome, but it's really not, um, it, you know, so that, that's, that says a lot that you can do that. Cause there's, there's a lot of movies that look not not as good that costs more than that so i well, mean I don't know. yeah I, I and everyone wants a bigger budget like i funded this myself with my producing partner so like the money goes in because i wrote it i directed i edited i cast um i will say the crew so the money where the money went with that we food which is you know, <laughs> and, and this, we needed to live yeah. Yeah. like it's i food is at least five thousand dollars like like everyone needs to be fed and you can tell the size of a budget the size of a production based on the food but i'm knowledgeable i'm knowledgeable enough and my producing partner is knowledgeable enough that like okay people need to be taken care of like if the food's bad everything goes down and morale is super important for me so like there's a lot of snacks people we have an individual menu that's passed around and okay hey what do you want here's your personalized meal you get whatever you want and yeah and then here's sean's credit card here you go wow um, now yeah. i i do have a question i saw that you I, I, let me rephrase i love the color grading on this movie oh yeah so it's phenomenal I, yeah, yeah i i agree so yeah the his name is Fernando. Uh, oh, well, I, I can't pronounce his last name right now. But if you go on the IMDb, it, it's the, the only color is guy. Oh. He, I will use him forever. He's amazing. And I, I don't want to shout him out with how much he, how much I paid him for it. But it was very small. Same with the sound designer, Sean Milburn. He's done amazing things since this movie. And, yeah, like the money went into the money went into the crew. The money went into all of the bullshit that happens at the end of the movie. I would say that we were less than, considerably less than that, having it been all completed. You need like lawyers. You need a lot of extra QC department. Uh, I didn't know, after having shot and edited the whole movie, we had a couple of dead pixels throughout the movie. So I have to apply a mat behind it, which is not that hard, but that's like one, we have like, four pages of QC that need to be done. So a lot of the final budget was just in the final delivery of everything. Yeah. Um, I, I just looked it up. It's Fernando Torres Idrovo. Yes. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And if you go through his other stuff, he's colored a lot since then. Um, nice. nice. It, it's yeah. The, the color grading went like really, I, I was like, Holy crap. That's one of the best color grading work I've ever seen. Like, that I, I loved the choice of shots that you, you chose to, to take with it. Like that whole scene where they're talking in the fiesta after the book signing. I like, I just, I was kind of like, that's a really good shot to pull off. And it was done very well. Yeah. Like when I'm, I'm pulling back from the, uh, from the car. I, yep. I, yeah. 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 That, that I liked that one. There was another one where, I think you just kind of changed positions from when she was looking over like the overpass and it, it just, it, it worked out very well to, to portray the, what she was going through right then and there. Yeah. yeah. Just wait till you watch the rest of it, Steve. I, yeah. I, no, I'm gonna... For real. Cause it all comes back. It all comes back. Like, uh, oh. it, it's, it's cool. Like there, there was, like I said, there were some things that I was like, I was not expecting that to happen. And, we watch so many movies. Sometimes, you know, we try to figure things out as it as it goes along. Yeah. And um, I mean, you're bound to have some things you're going to figure out. But I was just like, I was expecting it to go one way, and it went another way. And I and I liked that. Um, and uh, so, is, is this your first uh, like horror movie? Because looking at your other stuff that you've done, it, it doesn't seem like you've done much horror. It's my first horror um, production. Like a lot of how I personally make my money now is with finishing and editing and delivery. So I've done a Netflix series called Devil in Ohio. Uh, 
that came out since this movie's come out. But yeah, in terms of things that like I self own and you know, put out there to the world, yeah, this is my first uh, horror thing. I had a fairly successful comedy that came out right after AFI called American High School and had a lot of reality TV stars. It was kind of a sophomoric, um, sex is great, sex, 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 sex. And that's probably because, you know, at the time I was 20, I was 20 years old when I made that and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but it made millions of dollars, not for me, but it, ma it made a lot of money. And, and I got into reality TV since then because there were a lot of reality stars, like people from Laguna Beach, The Hills, Aubrey O'Day from Danny Kane. Um, mm -hmm. So all these people recommended me to do other things. The, one of the producers on that movie had a deal with a bunch of stuff. So, so yeah, the why I gravitated to horror is if I was to do that movie now, like with cancel culture and what, like, yeah, people's heads yeah. would explode. So I, I would be interested to see if, like, we still get a bit of traction. I get some checks from the DGA every quarter from it. So I know it's big in, um, oh, what's that country? Uh, I'm forgetting. There's a country in Eastern Europe where I primarily get most of my money from, from there. Oh, really? like, on the TV, because you can see on the residual things, like, I, I'm forgetting what country it is. Let's just say Finland. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so but the content in there would be outrageous today, especially from someone that's not like a Dave Chappelle. Like there's certain people, Ricky Gervais, Dave Chappelle, people like that can get away with yeah. certain things because they know that it means well. And for some 20 year old kid, they're like, yeah. but like, for instance, the, the girl goes into the nurse's office and the nurse is like an extreme like womanizer and starts touching the girl. And like it was this was all shot safely. Nothing actually happened. But it's it's kind of pushing sex and everything, but like shoving in your face. Right. Yeah. Like so, if it was like, a self, like for for like a distribution company nowadays, it may be a little tough, you know, like for sure. Like, I, I mean, I, I definitely know there's a lot of like independent stuff out there that's completely self like distribution and everything that um that they get away with that stuff, too, because they just don't care. Um, But but there's still a market for that stuff. Um, It may not be the market that's going to buy a house. But it's the market that's gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna watch your stuff forever. You know, it's that. I market. would be interested in watching some of those. Like, like, and in all honesty, like the DP that shot that won an Oscar since then. Not for this oh, movie, wow. obviously, but like people that and the editor now edits all the Fast and Furious movies. So like the people that I got to do that movie back in 2007, like, is insane. That and they all went off to do amazing things. Like one of the actresses on it is number 45 on IMDb right now. Like I don't know how she got up so high. I think she has a Netflix movie coming out with McGee, some action film that's coming out soon. But yeah, so so the reason why I got into horror is because I know there's no way I can do comedy like that right now and do comedy like that and get like actors to willingly want to be like, oh yeah, a name yeah, that's, for my that's, that's a good so point too. Yeah, yeah. If it's someone who's like a reality star, they may not want to sign off on that nowadays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but. Um, and I also, I'm 15 years older. So I think with my slightly more mature you know, voice, I've settled down a bit in my, you know, whatever it is going on with my life. So horror, I wanted to make a more interpersonal story. And I think I wanted to do it as realistically as possible. So the most realistic thing for horror is if your spouse turns on you, like 50% of marriages end in divorce. So they are a loving couple in the beginning. The girl wants to is a fame hound. She wants fame. The guy also, the guy wants to be a photographer. They team up just for this hack ghost hunting thing. But, you know, they do care for each other. And then by the end of the movie, they're turning on each other, trying to kill each other, blah, blah, blah. So, like, that's real. Like, people do, spouses turn on each other. They, you know, the most, the, the weirdest horror is, oh, I love you, I love you. And then, oh, you know, they murder each other. I love you um, to death. Yeah. No. yeah. Um, no, that, that's, uh, that's, that's a good point. I, like, um, I'm going to beat Sergio to the punch because Sergio always asks, he, by the way, he said, uh, he said, hi, hi, Sean. And, um, he's also asking where Tony is. Tony had, uh, there's something going on at his house. Like there was like a leak in the ceiling or something. Then they have to redo a ceiling in his room. So he wasn't going to be available tonight. Um, that's the only reason he's not here. Um, but that's the reason why we have our, our good friend, Steve. Um, yeah. Um, so the, uh, one thing I pointed out before we went live uh, is for as much as I like the movie, I, I don't think that the trailer really sells it well. Um, 
And you you agreed with me, and I just want to get into a little bit of that. For yeah, the, I, I, the, the audio for this will be going up a week from today as well, so the, the people that are listening after the fact uh, will be able to hear it as well. Yeah, I, I think the movie is about a mother losing her daughter and coming to terms with her death and dealing with the the gravitas of being a mother that fucked up. And you do this ghost hunting, but then through the... The villain in this movie who is messing with her is I, I this is the first time I'm saying this. I, I, I say different things every time, but saying it this way right now makes me think he's actually doing some good or like revealing the inner mo like people have a lot of shit inside. And most people they don't say what's like inside they, they not nature nurture, but you know what I'm saying? Like the the id and the whatever um so this guy is exposing this woman that like, hey, you were a terrible mother to your daughter. And the grief that she would go through is, oh yeah, I really was like a fucked up mother. And wow, like uh, for as a, for instance, the, the kid, the reason why the kid died, the kid got an illness, the mother wasn't treating it properly, the kid died. So she's basically you know, responsible for not caring for her daughter and letting her die. And be more concerned with like, oh, I have to go to this book appearance. I have to go do this. I have to do this. So, yeah. So she was like a kind of like a uh, what is it called? Not a distant mother, but a uh, an absent mother, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a mother from afar. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there is a way to structure the trailer like that. I try. I like honestly, I tried eight, nine different versions of the editing trailer. I don't think this movie does well in a trailer sense because, like you said, it's a slow burn. <laughs> Um, so I tried my best to cut something together. It's more than just scary man, even though that actor, Joseph Lopez is amazing. So Joseph mm -hmm. Lopez, the best actor, one of the best, the best actor I've worked with in the last five, 10 years, bar none. Like he is an amazing independent actor that's been in like 50, 60 different films. People don't know him enough. Mm -hmm. An amazing face. And like social media, Instagram, everything, he posts a lot of photos of movies he's done. Um, yeah. So so he is the villain in this movie. He he doesn't need a lot of makeup. He's just an amazing looking man. Um, Very so, grisly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, like, the, out of curiosity, was was there any like uh, I got I got the old uh, poltergeist poltergeist vibes. Uh, yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Was yes. Is that like an inspiration by chance? Or? I I like like. Um, I grew up with movies from the 80s and 90s, but there's something with the 70s aesthetic. It's just so like greasy, like mm -hmm. like, like there's like cigarette smoke everywhere, like the carpets, just you, the cameras then just the way that they shot things, everything looks dirty, but it's in a good way. Like yeah. you, it's hard to recreate that kind of thing. So yeah, like I was obviously influenced by a lot of the older um, established uh, properties in, in horror films, but also PC gaming. Um, I played a lot of uh, old adventure games, um, Phantasmagoria, a lot of Sierra stuff. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of good horror games, especially when full motion video got in in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, I I'm, was a big gamer. So a lot of the horror that I know, they're probably borrowing from a lot of other things. But yeah, like experiencing that in the dark room with the PC and you're actually controlling the people and, oh, do I click here? Do I use this? Do I use this? Oh, you're dead. But like yeah. it impacts you because you're like actually doing the stuff. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I can remember the first time playing Resident Evil and just being yeah. terrified. And that now you watch it's like there's a bunch of squares with, yeah. uh, that are uh, dogs coming at them. I don't know. It was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was a different time. Even with Poltergeist, like which is one of my favorite movies, it doesn't really hold up like visually sometimes, but it still gets me emotionally, you know. Um, but yeah, the, all that stuff really affects all of us. But so, Steve, I don't, I don't know if you had said where did you oh, leave so. off? Uh, you, you, you couldn't finish it because you, you had a, like a wicked long day. He's a, he works for, uh, he's a mailman. So I'm a mailman. He has, he has a uh, long day ahead of him where he walks I, I around. Twelve hours there. today, so yeah. uh, it was fun. Um, I want to say that I don't know how far exactly it is, but it was right around the time she started hearing voices. Uh, no, they, they went for a hike. Okay. Oh. How far into the beginning is that? Uh, that's probably like minute, uh, minute eighteen. I oh wow! Say. I thought it was way longer. <laughs> Whoops! Yeah. No, um, I, I, <laughs> oh, I yeah, 
I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it, it, I think that the worst the worst offense is that uh, like three years later, I still like the movie just came out in January, but I've been working on this since COVID. Like we shot January of 2020, so like the fact that I know like the basic minute mark mm -hmm. is it, it's uh, in the labor. Of love. You did all the editing and all the other stuff, so I mean, I can see uh, where where that uh, you would remember that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I get that. Um, I do have the trailer though. Like, uh, like I was saying, I, I want to play it, even though it's not like super representative of the movie. And I do recommend checking out. It's it's for rent right now on Amazon. Um, is it other streaming platforms as well, yeah. or is it just uh, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, Vudu, Roku, um, YouTube, and then if you have cable, uh, my mom has cable still, so it's on Spectrum and Verizon. For my mom does too. Yeah, like that. It's. I, they pay a hundred dollars a month, bless them, and they, they get a lot. Only a hundred? Jeez. It's, like I want to get we uh my, my parents just got rid of cable and my parents are in their eighties. So like they just got rid of cable because you know it, they're just like this is too much. They were paying almost two hundred bucks a month. Yeah. Spectrum out in, in central mass. And uh so yeah, it's just it's it's a bit much. And actually one of the other guys that would was gonna come on tonight, he still has cable and he's he's one of those guys who does not wanna give in on the streaming part of it <laughs> he's like he's like no 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 this it's not going to take over i'm like ah yeah it is yes it is like you're it, just holding on oh my god yeah um I, I, he just doesn't get it um but you can turn it off and on like uh, i say that but like i if you add it up i probably spend 40 50 dollars a month because when you add up netflix disney plus paramount plus i just got paramount plus when you add all those things up, it, but like Netflix, even though I do a lot of stuff from them, probably shouldn't admit this. I just turned off my Netflix subscription. So oh, you can turn whatever. it back all any time, but like, yeah. 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 But ne Netflix is shooting themselves in the foot. So it's not, it, it's totally worth it to turn them off. Well, yeah. There's a bunch of internal things I could talk about, which would, I, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, yeah. I don't want to get in we'll trouble. Talk you have about to it after. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, but, uh, well, we we do like a ton of stuff. Like I have Shutter. Like we have. Uh, I don't. Even, I don't even know how many we pay for. It, but we still are paying way less than what we were paying for cable with like a billion pay channels that we never yeah. watched. So it's like, all right, at least now we can cherry pick what we actually pay for. You know. I think that's why I like streaming is because. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say I love Pluto TV and stuff like that because like if I oh, want to yeah. watch cop cops reruns, like they have a cops channel. Yep. Like plugging them a little bit because I might be doing something with them soon. But like the they have all their channels. It's free. I don't mind the ads. And yeah. like they're same. I, I watch it all the time. Like the uh, I I'm a I'm a big sucker for the first forty eight, and they have a couple different first forty eight channels on on Pluto TV. And I'm like, all right, I've seen this one already. Let me go to the other channel. I'm like, all right, I haven't seen this one in a long time. Um, but that and then you know just old school TV. Like my parents are all about Pluto TV right now because they just watched the Carol uh, Burnett show all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah. They loved it when they, when it was new. Um, but anyways, before we just go on a tangent about uh, Carol Burnett, which I always miss up <laughs> oh, her name. On. I thought that's where we were going. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, I just going to play the trailer for the third guest. Uh, again, this is streaming pretty much everywhere. It's for rent. I know on Amazon it's about three ninety nine to rent. I think it's. I don't know if you can buy. It. I'm assuming you can buy it. Is it available yeah. on social media right now as well? Uh, I'm sorry. What what was is it available for like on physical media for the people that collect? Yeah, actually, I that is the one thing I forgot. I just got the DVD for it, so yeah, it's on. It's in Walmart for DVD. Um, okay. So a bunch of other places. If you Google it on DVD, I think there's a Blu-ray coming out. I've seen the Blu-ray disc, so mm -hmm. hopefully eventually. But it's, yeah. it it, believe it or not, there's a, a lot of people. Like I have a mixture of both, but there's. One of the other guys that's normally on the show, Tony, he's just like, if it's on, if it's on, if it's not on Blu-ray, I don't know if I want to bother. Like, cause it's like, it doesn't match his collection kind of deal, but, yeah. but anyways, here, here is the trailer for the third guest and we'll be back in one minute and 50 seconds. Enjoy. Hey, I got another job for you guys. If you're interested, got her to pay double. Call me once you're settled. All right. Arm said the stuff about Margaret's dead. What do you think is up with Carla? Do you believe in that crowd? Come on. We need the money. Yeah, this looks like an address. 
I should have never called. Then why are you here? I'm here to warn you. Warn me about what? Right. Everyone. Everything. I just really want to leave. Just roll with it. Come on, just get in, get the story, get out. Relax. You're acting paranoid now. It's gone. I was literally writing all morning. All of it's gone. This is a sick joke on us. It's a sick joke on us. But it's something off about that house. <laughs> Our love was. Our love. You're in my world. All right, so maybe I'm giving it too much crap. Uh, I mean, th there are some parts that I thought were pretty good in the trailer, but. Yeah, yeah. The, the sound design, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, at the same time, too, though, like it, it, it almost leads you to believe that it's going to be a certain kind of movie, uh, that it's that it's really kind of not like it. Like if I, you know, seeing that and then seeing the movie, like I would assume it would be like almost like, you know, just like almost like a uh, uh, not not like a zombie apocalypse kind of thing. But it, it seems like everyone's like chasing this girl down kind of deal. And like, it, I mean, it is different. Like it is a lot of other psychological stuff going yeah. on. It's a story about grief, which is slow, and that's not what a trailer is. I mean, in their defense, in the, in the distributor's defense, I think they had a hard task because, like, I tried seven, eight times to cut a trailer properly, mm -hmm. and you know, I gave what I had to them. I had contracted a uh, singer to sing a version of Hallelujah, so it's a big montage of her like in grief. And in the background, most of the of the uh, soundtrack is just hallelujah, hallelujah. But it's it with a you know macabre kind of you know, surreal thing. Um, yeah, it didn't work. So yeah. But e even still, though, I, I I did enjoy it, and I'm a big fan of slow burn, like I said. And so, Ty, just out of curiosity, do you have a favorite Ty West movie? Um, the the uh, the innkeepers. Okay. I. <laughs> There's a lot of people that give that movie crap. Like it's, I'm like, no, no, that movie's great. Like it's, it's got the payoff is like right at the very end, and it, it, you know, you, it, you're there's a lot of build up to it, but it's totally worth it. Some parts are silly. Like when Sarah Paxson first encounters the ghost, it's in her bed sleeping next to her. It's mm -hmm. done super well, and then her reaction to it is like, <sighs> she like her reaction is comical. And yeah. I we rewatched it again recently. And it's like, uh. But like the, the I, I'm spoiling it if you don't like I'm sure I'll be, it's you like, seen it yet. by now it was all over Netflix for a long time I don't think it's yeah, there it's anymore but you yeah. ruined it um, I mean it's, <laughs> you're doing yourself a disservice like, go watch it uh, the husband like I yeah I'm like jumping out of my seat to talk about it it's really <laughs> great like the husband that comes back and murders him and kills suicide in the his bathtub it's like mm -hmm. like that kind of scene hits me because it's like an old man. The, the, whole, the inn is closing. I'm, I'm plugging this movie now, not yeah. my the guy, the, This inn is closing. and It's an inn in uh, Massachusetts as well. It's the, uh, was it the Yankee Peddler, I think is what yeah, it's called? Yeah. 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 And, the and like, Yeah, the Yankee Peddler. Yep. Like Sorry, the guy ahead. comes in and like, oh, I want to rent a room, blah, blah, blah. And that's where he uh, did his honeymoon with his wife back in 1930, whenever it was. It's an older gentleman. And then, like, he goes in the bathtub and kills himself because that was where they'd had their honeymoon. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, the place is going to close soon. I don't care about the staff. Bye. Yeah. But comedy aside, I tend to make light of stuff like that. But that's, like, a really, like, creepy, like, sick thing. There's moments like that throughout that movie that, yes, like, if I'm going to do horror like I did with Third Guest, it's going to be a slow burn. I would make a lot of changes from what I did on this. But I think the fact that this even came out with COVID, with, you know, the budget we had, with a lot of the problems we had, like to get it out there and to have it release. Um, I'm proud of what we all made as a team. 
So nice. that's good. Well, yeah, I mean, rightfully so. I mean, uh, le- like I said, uh, you know, I've I've watched a billion movies and um, I'm always looking for a little twist that I didn't expect. And um, I got it. So that's that's a for the amount of stuff I watch. And I'm sure Steve can say the same. Um, he watches a lot of probably different stuff than I watch. Like I, no, I, I watch to, everything. But yeah, yeah, you watch a little bit of everything. I'm I'm not as much as into the everything. <laughs> um, I'm 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 definitely more more so. Uh, if I'm going to sit down and watch a movie, it's generally going to be a horror movie. Um, I watch some comedies and stuff like that, but it's usually like older stuff. Um, you know, just the the tried and true stuff for me. I'm like I'm like I'm not looking for any new uh you know new fandom when it comes. To, sometimes I'll find it and I'll be like, oh, this person's amazing. But so it's it's a lot. I think to, to trip me up. Um, but so, so with, with this one coming out, uh, did, did you, because of COVID, did you end up getting any kind of like a, like a premiere or was it something where it was just like, all right, just distribution. That's it. We're not doing anything else. There, there was talk of, of some things, but it just, it, uh, no, but the, the, okay. the diplomatic answer is no. It, it was just kind of, okay, here it is. Um, I'm doing some kind of publicity on my own, such as things like this. Um, I hired a really great PR guy doing stuff on like horrorfilm.net. Um, mm-hmm. And he's been great so far. Like uh, if any, uh, I'm open to anything. Like if you IMDb me, like you see my cell phone, you see my email. I'm happy to give that guy's information out. I would say for horror films, especially because this guy deals with, his name is Michael Joy. Like the best PR I've ever received for the rate that I'm paying. He he's gotten it out. Like 99% of the news articles about this movie is through him. Oh, wow. Amazing. And he's, he's opening. He told me a few days ago, he's trying to do a podcast himself. So I said, I'm, I'll be your first guy like this. So my, his name's Michael joy. I think he runs horror film net and, uh, yeah, I, I'm happy to give his. I think his information is also out there if you just Google Michael Joy. Yeah, I was going to say if you if you uh, like, I, I was on the the third guest, uh, or it, it was either yours or or the third guest one, and I know like the, a number and stuff did come up uh, when the the trailers that are playing in the background when you're on the IMDb. Um, oh. So I'm assuming it was that one. But um, no, that's that's pretty great. Uh, and there's that's a lot of work. There's a there's a lot of work that goes into that kind of stuff. So uh, that's that's good to hear. That obviously he's passionate about this stuff too. So that's good. Yeah, he, he is very like, and his main thing is I realize PR is tough. I realize people in independent films don't have a big budget. So like, how can I help? That's reasonable for my time. And so like, I, I reached out to a lot of PR people, and like most of them were quoting things in the thousands of dollars. He was quoting in the hundreds. So it's hmm. like, um, it's like, hey. Um, I'll work with you again. Can we do this again? And he said, Oh, it's probably going to be on the same websites, but I can do banner ads. I can do speaking of Pluto TV. He can get me some more ads on Pluto TV, some ads on Hulu. So it's like, all right, okay, well, let's do it again. Like probably yeah. another month or two, I'll do another round with him. So he's That's been awesome. so great. Cool. So, so Steve, as like a, a aspiring filmmaker or as someone who's just got the itch that you want to do some stuff, do you have any questions for our fine I- guest? I was gonna say, what did you what did you shoot on? I was I was intrigued by the the camera work. The the camera, in all honesty, was a ten plus year old Sony camera. It required a lot of um, maneuverability and battery issues, and you know, we shot in Idlewild um, in California, which uh, most people go to Big Bear. That's where the skiing is, and Idlewild is next door, maybe. 45 minutes away it's another mountain but has no skiing so not a lot of tourists which is great for filmmaking so the house that you see in the movie is all airbnb um and so yeah the camera was not the best like i said with the dead pixels and everything but when you get fernando's color on top of it um the camera was also borrowed it was one of the producer's cameras so when i quoted their budget I still owe her five thousand dollars once I start to see the receipts because she lent us, you know, the camera for the entire shoot. We paid for um, additional bells and whistles, like the drone footage, which I don't, I don't know why more independent films don't use drones now. But I actually loved the drone footage from that yeah. when, when like the the shots from that were amazing. Yeah, and it was all for like three hundred, three hundred fifty dollars. Like we, get, it, get, it's crazy because it, like I, I. If I were to turn this, I have all my studio gear over here. Like it's, it's ridiculous how much money you you put into 
something but, but at that the same you love. time too so like you said like that that drone footage like 300 350 dollars like the the cost of the technology has come way down over the last since you filmed the movie you know or even since you know you've right, been making right. movies it's come down quite a bit and I just should I go ahead? I, I just bought a B-roll camera. I, I don't shoot anything up more than 1080p at this point right now, but I just bought a B-roll camera for 180 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's it's crazy considering, you know, a drone when they first came out would be like, you know, well over a thousand dollars and the, 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 the footage would be garbage, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, and I, I don't know, like, I, I just imagine like if, if some of these older movies like had the ability to have a drone, you know, because for as much as I love The Shining, there's like one one shot in the opening of The Shining where you can see the propellers from the helicopter that yeah. they're like doing when they're going over the mountains. I'm like, oh, that always bugs me. You know, I'm like, yeah. if they had a drone, that would be a different story. Um, but I don't know. Like the reverse of that is that everyone is doing that Shining shot, including me. And <laughs> <laughs> well, Actually, it's not always done to, like to the best of the ability, you know, like sometimes it's like. Well, wow, that's the only good thing about this movie is that drone shot that they just had a friend with a drone, you know? Um, I I watch a lot of red letter media and the harshest criticism was I don't know if you guys are aware of them, Mike and Jay at Red Letter Media, but they were famous for Star Wars parody reviews and they've since gone on to have like legitimate like, you know, they they get millions of views for it's a YouTube channel. And mm -hmm. what they did in January for our release was Okay, let's take trailers, horror movies released in January, which there are a lot. Let's pick five of them out of random that in the trailer we see the shining shot. And so I, I, I'm a religious watcher of them. And they go through like a Michael Madsen movie. They go through like movies that had hundreds of thousands of dollars in their budget. And okay, one, two, three, four. And I, I'm thinking, oh, oh no, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And then the fifth movie, and, and Oh, and the lowest rated uh, movie among the five, the third guest, and then they show our shot like, oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so my point is that the technology's out there, like how do you utilize it? And I think that shot in the trailer um, of the girl running and I flip it, she obviously wasn't running that direction with the drone. Like when she's running upside down, I mean, with the ground mm -hmm. up, up. Like shots like that using the drone are interesting. I think I was... I mean, everyone can be naive and not be on, on their best day. Just getting a car going through the mountain in a drone shot. Like, you're opening yourself up to criticism. You're opening yourself up to, oh, the third guest like The Shining. No, but, like, I don't. But, you know, the ability is there. It's like how you use that technology, I think. Yeah. Because anyone and their mother has an iPhone. Anyone can shoot things. That's what separates movies from the 70s, 80s, 90s to now. You have so much more content. How do you whittle through, like, 20 right. 50 movies per month or per per day that get released like how right. do you shift through all that content to get something that's like valuable to watch um, it, so. it is tough it's tough to stand out um and then again going back into the streaming service thing with with you know uh, services like pluto and even like tubi and stuff like that yeah. there's a lot out there and it's got it's something's got to really just stand out and just there's something that's got to grab you so it's uh it's tough it is really tough you know, whether it be a, a poster or whether it be a trailer or even just yeah. a title or something like, like, oh, like, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Now, PR is super important. Yeah. Go ahead. How do you feel about like nowadays the the amount of things that are out there that aid in just the average person just making a movie? Like there, there are so many new things out there that just we didn't you didn't have 10 years ago. Like well, even, even shoot, just the iPhone, like you mentioned, there was, was a full-length feature. Yeah, yeah full-length feature that was made on an iPhone. I forget I, what it was called, but um, I think Martin Scorsese did something with an iPhone as well. This this was a horror movie that took place in like a mental institution. Um, I know one of my favorite stand-up comics, Robert Kelly, was in it, and so that was the main reason I wanted to watch it because he was in it. And I'm like, this movie is actually really good, and uh, yeah. it was all done on an iPhone. You just they say it's done on an iPhone. It's not someone standing there holding an iPhone. It was in a rig and it had all these like fancy lenses and stuff, but the, the, the brain behind all of it was an iPhone. Um, yeah. It, that, that goes, it, it goes into what Sean was saying though, about like knowing how to use it. Exactly. Well. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of directors out there that have really nice 4k cameras, but they look just like an old Sony handy cam. 
No, I'm just saying, I'm not saying you, I'm saying there's people that have movies that are available to buy nationwide that yeah. still use like onboard audio from their, from their like super expensive camera, which is not made for audio. It's made for video, but they use the onboard audio for the microphone for their, for oh, their yeah. movies. You know, that's crazy to me. But no, yeah, I just I think it's crazy that like uh, before this, I, I would have never had the type of money to put that I've put towards what I'm building here. Yeah. yeah and yeah. and it's just amazing to see, you know, a, a filmmaker. I, I, I've always wanted to know how they feel about like anybody being able to do it. The, are you? It's 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 like that's how i i taught myself how to edit when i was a freshman at franklin and marshall and i gravitated from bad shakespeare to i, I just went out with those digital cameras and shot stuff so ultimately it is good it would be like because that's how i was born from being able to do things and i am by no means at my apex like i hope to you know do tons more of these like i built up a small amount of money but as you can see like thirty thousand forty thousand dollars gets you this but yeah the, what i'm trying to say is like having the floodgates open and have everyone being able to do things i think in a time where there's way too much crap that's out there and in in the past if you wanted to make a film there was a huge um gate of i don't know how to work with film i don't have investors uh, okay three million dollars four million dollars and when vhs came on it helped because people could do more independent movies that people would actually see but now it's like almost too much but hopefully just the ability to be able to do things i learned so much by doing like i, I said i taught myself editing i made one feature every year in college like the movie i made in the uk dur during the year i was out there was what got me into the film institute working with you know, Shakespearean actors in England, they treated it a lot more professionally. The movie turned out well because it was better acting. Um, but I also grew every year just doing stuff. So the ability to do things on your iPhone, the ability to do things, like I hope, I think the best lesson from Third Guest is that you can do them 30,000, maybe even less, probably less, but you're going to have to edit it yourself, find your own distributor, find, you know, have a bunch of favors going around. Like I said, for the camera, like I still owe people money. Um, yeah, just, um, and, and have it come out, but be prepared that you're going to have to, you're going to stumble a lot. You're going to on a 2 million, 4 million, whatever million dollar movie, you have a lot of safety nets. You have a lot of producers and people around you. It's like, Ooh, maybe you shouldn't do that shot. Maybe you shouldn't do this. There's a lot of talking in the room, but they also support you. So I didn't have an AD. I didn't have a script supervisor. I didn't yeah. have. Yeah. The only thing with that, though, is that I've I've seen some like independent movies that have gone like they, they've they they've gone uh, a little bit higher up and gotten a bunch of producers involved and stuff like that. And because there's producers involved, it's actually kind of destroyed their original view on like what they wanted to do on the movie. Uh, because yeah. it's like, well, this guy's paying all the bills. He wants his entire family to be in this movie. So I have to find a spot for his five year old nephew um, like in this horror movie that takes place in a prison. Like, how is that going to work? It. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, it's, you know, that, that that's that's the unfortunate part, too. But that's the part that most people watching a movie don't understand. They don't understand the trials and tribulations of actually getting the movie done. Like th we've had a there was a movie we had on a couple of years back where the whole movie was edited and ready to go. And someone broke into the guy's house and stole all of his hard drives oh. and he had to re-edit the whole movie all over again. That's that ridiculous. Yeah. So it's like. So yeah, maybe the editing could have been a little bit better, but you don't know that it was edited better, but he was on such a time constraint. He had to get it done like by a certain time in order to even get this thing released, you know? And it's, it's, it stinks. Like most people don't know that stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. What, and that's the important thing that when a movie's done, like I'm not, no one's entirely happy with their film, but like once it's done and out there, like being able to take the criticism well and like owning up to like, all right, well, it's done. There's positives, there's negatives, but like, yeah. And then there, are, I think there are a lot of, there is a lot of value with the themes I was trying to do with certain actors like Joseph Lopez, I was mentioning the, the lead actor, um, the husband character, Matthew T. Clark, he, this is his first role. He, he was, he played for the NFL. He that was his first role. Yeah. He came, he was, he was wicked good. Yeah. So he, former NFL player, I want to transition into acting and okay. I, you know, 
um, auditioned a bunch of people, but mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think it's a secret. Like the actors I used are not SAG actors. The actors I used um, were all working for free. I have deferments. I paid them. When we went to Idlewild, I housed them. Um, if, if everyone needed material for their reel, so everyone has gotten what they asked me to give them. Um, mm -hmm. From the highest down to like, oh, hey, I'm just a day player. I want my scene for my reel, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's your scene in full, you know, 4K. Thank you so much, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, Matthew T. Clark, um, a lot of the reviews and stuff I've read so far has said, oh, we'd like to see him do more, stuff like that. I agree. Mm -hmm. He was a very good actor. So yeah, so yeah. That always surprises me too, is a lot of times you'll have an actor that has never done anything and he's like, wow, they're really knocking it out of the park. This is crazy. Then and then at that point it's just like all right the next one now this dude's gonna be super nervous that he's gonna screw it all up like that's how I would be but um <laughs> but anyways um we are gonna be wrapping up in the next couple minutes but um so Steve do you have any other uh, queries or questions for our guest in re in regards to filmmaking or the movie that you uh, still have to finish. I <laughs> no uh i i was wondering like i was looking at your imdb earlier today like what exactly is a finishing editor yeah I so it's so a lot i've been doing for netflix like when i did stuff for sonic 2 stuff like that they give me the assets i online the footage gloss it up in the 4k i do a lot of the subtitling graphics work um, I'm not sure if it's on my reel, but when we started with the Sonic 2 trailer in particular, a lot of the graphics and VFX stuff was real rushed. So I'm using a lot of wireframe things. We receive those graphics from the various vendors and I place them in, make sure they QC. It's a lot of QC and then delivery for a whole bunch of different trailers like Bullet Train, for instance, that Brad Pitt movie. I was taking the title and making it or the, the main title says Bullet Train. I'm like, I speak a tiny bit of Japanese, um, but like I'm taking it into like 17 different languages and like, okay, okay, blah, blah, blah. So it's a lot of finessing and QCing and delivery. Um, sometimes I have deliveries that like with the Netflix thing, do revenge. They had a PR campaign thing like that was live at 9 a.m. And like we had the sound mix at like without exaggeration, we had the sound mix in with the final notes and everything at 6 a.m. So I'm like countdown ticking three hours to like, okay, input it export it properly, make sure the specs are correct. Because if it's not like it, that, remember that, that Tom Cruise mission, it was no, the, the mummy. Remember that the, when they released the trailer and like, oh, oh, he's out of the plane and like, yeah, like stuff like that, that was a fuck up from the finishing QC department that they delivered it and okay, okay, it's ready to go. And then, oh, and then that was a laughing stop for like to this day. So, really? so yeah. Yeah, so I don't think it was uh, the trailer though. The movie was itself. Well, yeah, the movie was <laughs> like they released the trailer with like one audio track um, and just like the sound effects. So like Tom Cruise is leaning out of the plane with the mummy, and all you're hearing is like ah oh, ah, oh, and then, like you're hearing like the worst. Like yeah. there's no yeah yeah. I, I'm sure it still exists on the internet and um, in some. I was form. I was actually kind of curious if that kind of stuff happens because there's a there's a like kind of like a sketch show that I love. It's a, a third season of it just came out on Netflix. And when I watched through it the doing? first, no, 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 I, th I, I think you should leave is what it's called. Oh, oh yes, um, yes, yes. Um, so the, when I went through watching it the first time, I was like, the aspect seemed off. Like everything seemed stretched. Right. right? Yeah. And then I, I went and I was like thinking about it. I'm like, I wonder if that's like, I was like, maybe it's, maybe it's just the settings on my, on my, my Chromecast or something. I checked and all the different streaming things we have in the house and it was all the same. I went back and checked the next day and it was, it was different. Yeah. So I'm yeah. Like, you must have uploaded something wrong. And uh, someone's like, yeah, screwed up. You go back and fix this. So and that, yeah. There were people that were probably fired for that. Like I, like, oh, yeah. way long ago, I made a tiny mistake when I was doing the thing at CBS and no, like, it's so odd how like every, like I go into work, everything. Oh yeah. Nice, nice, nice. And then, Oh uh, no, you're, you're, you're gone. And it like, I made a wrong decision with like, who I gave footage to. This is, I, I'm dating myself now. This is back in like 2010. Um, so over 10 years ago, I'm an old man. It makes you feel any better. I'm, I'm way older than you. So don't worry about it. You look great. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. No, I, I'm going to be 48 this year. So I'm, I'm, oh. uh, I'm an old man. Anyways. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so, so yeah, like the, the, um, basically that is what finishing QC, you know, finishing delivery editor. I'm, um, making sure that things are properly, yeah, correct aspect ratio, 
it has, you know, the correct tracks. Like when I'm delivering a stereo track, it's actually the stereo track when I'm delivering five one mixes, like everything's proper. And a lot of people don't know if it's proper or not, but someone else is going to tell them it's not right. And then right. like, Oh, uh, so it, it's a lot of meticulous QC work and that's how I've been making my money the last two, three years. So um, I haven't made any money off their guest yet, but hopefully we'll see some kind of return soon. Fingers crossed. Fingers yeah. crossed. Fingers crossed. But yeah. I'm, regardless of what happens, I'm, I love doing this and I'm going to be hopefully doing more independent movies soon and doing this for the rest of my life. Awesome. Well, that's, that's great. Um, and Sergio asked a while ago, do you like, what do you have coming out next? Is there anything that you can talk about? Um, Just about I know it's, it. It, yeah, it's, it's a little different now with, uh, the writer strike. I know a lot of a lot of productions are just shut down with a lot of stuff. Um, I don't know if that's affected you in any way. But it has. Uh, do you have anything coming out? So I um, in we shot Third Guest in 2020. In 2021, I shot a pseudo sequel to the Third Guest, which is called The Sixth Floor. It does have that actor I mentioned, Joseph Lopez, in it. It has a few other actors, but it's not technically a sequel. Um, that one I don't own. I was contracted because some of the people on Third Guest said, hey, we love what you did on the set. Could you do that for us? And so I made a bit of money doing that for them. I wrote an original script. I used some of the actors from it. Um, that should be coming out later this year. Nice. Um, and But specifically for me, um, I shot a horror short recently that I might be turning into a feature. Um, but yeah, for right now, it's a lot of looking for partners were looking for investment trying to um, do something in early 2024 um, with some people i'm talking to so nothing right now but i have shot things since then awesome cool i can't wait to yeah. see more and actually finish this movie <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I, I really think i really i really enjoyed the the the, the switch like the, it was a different vibe for me altogether and again like i said this low burn ty west i'm i'm just happy that there's another ty west fan because there's a lot of people who don't know who I'm talking about when I mention Ty West. There's a lot of people like, I don't, and then I'll mention a movie. He's like, oh yeah, no, I really like that movie. I'm like, yeah, it's Ty West. All of his movies are just great. Um, Honestly, I wasn't sure who, you, who that was until I looked it up and I was like, oh, I love Pearl. House of the Devil Pearl. is my favorite. Yeah. House of the Devil. Yeah, but Pearl. I like, and Nick, yeah, I like yeah. that one a lot. So House of the Devil, that's one that like, you're talking about like the older movies feel gritty and stuff like that. Yeah. I legit, the first time I saw that movie, I'm like, how did I never hear this movie growing up? I yeah. thought it was a movie from the 80s because it, it definitely feels like it it looks like it sounds like it yeah. everything and then i was like wait a minute this movie's not that old at all like that's that's crazy like he that was what sold me on ty west was uh house of the devil i'm like he was able to trick me just on you know now like the, the uh the main like uh actor the guy who was uh the frankenstein and uh um wolfman's got nards what is that monster squad uh he uh i was like he's not that old like okay. if this movie came out in the eighties, he would be way younger than this. Like, and then that's what made me look it up. But uh, yeah, it's, it's so good. He's one of those guys, and he acts still. Like he was in Your Next. Like he was, uh, he acted in that. He was one of the guys with like one of the the goat masks or whatever. Um, so I think that's pretty awesome too. He's he's not too. Uh, he's he likes to do a little bit of everything. So that's cool. And you should get back into acting too, maybe one of these days. Um, I think. I, I never say never. I might. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I think like the Hitchcock thing, if you put yourself in your own movies or, or stuff like that, I feel like it's too pretentious and I have way too much going on behind the camera right. doing like, 17 jobs. But right. yeah, like if something comes up, then maybe, but I haven't acted in like 25 years. But yeah. I appreciate uh, and and also because of the internet, I don't think any of my acting exists on the internet. But now all my, you know, if I was born, if this is you know, 20 years in the future, like all that stuff would be all over. Like, oh, sure. acting in New Jersey theater. And, but no, none of it exists. Yeah. Actually, that one of the other guys that was supposed to be on, uh, one of our other co-hosts, he's he's from New Jersey. I'm not sure what part, but he's from New Jersey. So you guys could have talked about uh, about driving through New Jersey and how, how you can smell it as soon as you hit New Jersey. <laughs> Um, I legit, I was, me and my cousin were driving like from Massachusetts to New York and we had to go through New Jersey and I was like, what does that smell? And like legit within seconds, welcome to New Jersey. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. This is crazy. But, um, we're just in a bad area, I guess. Um, but now <laughs> yeah, yeah, we to wrap up. Yeah. So where, where would you like people to follow you to find out more about like your upcoming projects and keep an eye on like anything else that you got coming up? 
I would love if people follow me on Instagram. I don't talk much there um, with my own personal stuff, but if you direct message me, um, you know, or like I, I throw my cell phone out there. So if people want to text me or email me, like I would be happy to respond. Like, and if they have any questions about filmmaking or, or one thing I do want to point out, all of our locations, it was just Airbnb. So nice. they had they signed releases, but like the house. All, so going into that thirty thousand, um, like there's a lot of tricks of the trade, which I think got the budget real low. So I'm open to I, I want to share my small independent knowledge um, to help make people's productions you know run smoother. Nice. So yeah, feel free to reach out. I would say Instagram is probably good. I don't have a Twitter. Um, I have a mm -hmm. YouTube channel, but it's a lot of. Uh, the YouTube channel just has a lot of corporate stuff that I, I do. Like I do corporate edits and I throw them up there. Um, I think my latest reel is on there, but yeah. Check cool. me out on Instagram. It's just Sean Patrick Hannon. Um, I think on my website, I also link like on my LinkedIn, my Instagram, stuff like that. All right. Perfect. And then uh, Steve, what about yourself? Uh, where can people go to check out your awesome podcast? Oh, yeah. Uh, you can check us out at Nerds of Unusual Origin. We're on the uh, Darkening Podcast Network as well. Uh, you know, we come out, we drop an episode every week. We give away beer at the end of the month. Uh, just, you know, if you want to talk about some nerd shit, just find us at NOUL Podcast anywhere. Yeah. See, it's a, it's a bad time in my life to, to stop drinking. Like, uh, I, I stopped drinking years ago. And it's just like, now I meet all these people that are just giving away beer. How is this? How's that going to, you know, we, that doesn't work I, out. It, you know, what's funny is like we, it was just an idea and it's kind of spiraled into this little thing where we, we have breweries talking to us like, Hey, get, here's a four pack. Like, cause the, we give nice. ratings. We, we Yeah. That's, that's good. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's smart. It's very yeah. smart. So, oh, yeah. um, and so for myself, uh, just a knuckle on Instagram, uh, besides doing this show, I'm also part of, oh, besides doing a show that's also on the Dorkening podcast network. Um, I'm also part of Black and White Fright, which we just talk about classic horror movies. And um, I'm now part of That Strange Show, which is also on the network. And uh, word on the streets is that I'm going to start. There's a podcast that was supposed to start a while ago that got kind of put on the back burner. We're supposed to be recording our first episode on the 3rd. So that should be coming out shortly. We'll see if it happens. Fingers crossed. But um, but yeah, thanks for watching slash listening. And uh, go check out the third guest wherever uh, streaming stuff is at. And maybe go to uh, Walmart and pick up your physical copy. And yeah, have a, have a fun movie night. Yeah. Um, so thanks again and have a good night. Bye. See you.